Our relationship to the potato began in the Andes Mountains of South America. In places like Pisac in Peru, people have long depended on the potato for survival. To make sure they grow enough potatoes, they've developed an astonishing degree of agricultural creativity. We reckon that there are more than 5,000 different potato varieties in the Andean region. There are tremendous combinations of colors as well as shapes. You find very elongated potato tubers that don't look potatoes at all. To very, uh, very strange with very different protuberances. They look very, very strange to you. It was in the Andes that people first domesticated the potato plant around 8,000 years ago. To do that, they had to overcome a big obstacle. The potato in the wild is poisonous. You know, it's one of those crops that produces solanine, which is an alkaloid, which is poisonous. And, and in fact, potatoes still produce it, by the way. If you allow your potato to get exposed to light and it turns green, it's producing solanine and you shouldn't eat it. But in the plant world, there are always exceptions to the rule. Genes inevitably mutate and plants change. People did a lot of trial and error, tasting potatoes and spitting them out or getting sick. And then eventually you find one that, hey, this one doesn't have that taste. Maybe this one's all right. And those would be the potatoes that we would save. Over time, the Peruvians achieved great success as potato farmers, not by trying to control nature, but by adapting to it. Whenever you're moving up in altitude, you're having a radical change in climate. And one side of a hill will have a very different climate than another. The way the early Peruvians dealt with that was to grow many different varieties of potatoes and preserve the diversity so that on a plot of this kind of facing toward the sun at this kind of altitude, you plant this one. And on this plant, on the, just on the other side of the hill, you plant this potato. And this was a way of gaining control over their fate. Because if something happened on that one plot at that altitude, they would still have other potatoes. The Andean region has many niches for growing crops. And the potato was able to adapt to different areas. That's why there were so many varieties developed for different uses and different purposes along the Andes. Fastino Paco is 24. His family has been growing potatoes here in the Andes for hundreds of years. Como hay muchas culturas que existen acá en Perú, nosotros somos una cultura, la cultura de papa. O es nuestro tesoro, o nuestra riqueza que hay en la comunidad. Conanga, guay que con panay con aquí, papá antes pa, jo, pa ya te ramo no capucuri gusa, apu conaman, apu runa chileana. Que eso marta papá ta, si pucuri camini que van, san en chani que van, conang papá ta jocari esa, cojí ya esa. El ritual de la cosecha de la papa, esto viene siendo desde los años ancestrales. Y hasta hoy en día estamos manteniendo eso. Salud, buenas noches. Nuestra comunicación es con la Pachamama, porque nosotros vivimos en la Pachamama tierra y vivimos de la Pachamama. These Andean farmers are the descendants of one of the great civilizations of history, the Incas. They presided over one of the most sophisticated agricultural systems on Earth, based in large part on the potato. But when the Spanish invaded in the 16th century, they destroyed the Inca Empire and set the potato, and our relationship with it, on a new phase of its journey. <laughs> 